Welcome, this is Anna Galletli, and we're going to be going on to part two for our respiratory system where we're going to be talking about the histology. All right, in this slide, I am organizing information for you. All right, so here I'm showing you big, whoops, big to smallest structures. Okay, so you got primary, which is also called main, secondary, which is low bar, tertiary, which is um, segmental, then it goes to subsegmental, large bronchial, terminal bronchial, respiratory bronchial, alveolar ducts, alveolar sacs, alveoli. Okay, now you are then going to subdivide this into cells of the conducting zone and cells of the respiratory zone. Okay, so let's mark this here. All of this is conducting. All right, the tissue is too thick for grass exchange. Here, it is all respiratory. You are using simple squamous epithelium, epithelium, okay? So, you can do gas exchange. Now, it's A and P, we've gotta have multiple names. So, these simple squamous cells are also called type one cells. They are the dominant cell in the respiratory zone. The vast majority of cells are these. But we also throw in some simple cuboidal cells that we call type twos. They are cuboidal because of their function, which is to make surfactant. Surfactant you secrete onto the surface of the alveolus, okay? And what this does is it reduces surface tension. Okay, I want you to know this. Surfactant reduces surface tension. Now, if you know what surface tension is, you know that water molecules want to stick together. When they do that, that would tend to keep the alveolus collapsing and staying small and not expanding to where you want it to be. That's bad because then your lung can collapse. So you use surfactant, it breaks up the water molecules inside the alveolus, which then allows the alveolus to expand properly when it's in its relaxed state. This is really important in preemies because surfactant cells don't start working until right before birth. So if a baby is born premature, their type two cells aren't working yet, they don't secrete surfactant, they have a tendency for their lungs to collapse every single time they exhale. This is very energy, um, this is an energy hog. The babies have to work really hard to reinflate their lungs and then they end up dying because they use up too much energy and they can't get enough nutrients in order to keep inflating their lungs. So nowadays they will um, actually inject an artificial surfactant into preemies um, in order to counteract this. All right, next slide. Here I am saying what I said on the previous slide, but bigger. All right, so let's start looking at these cells. So let's look at the picture first. So I've got in here my bronchial coming down. Notice that it is wrapped in smooth muscle for vaso, excuse me, for bronchodilation and bronchoconstriction. I've also got a branch of the pulmonary artery. Notice it is blue even though it is an artery because it is deoxygenated blood coming from the pulmonary circuit or right side of your heart pump. It is coming here to pick up oxygen, okay? So it's gonna come in here and the blood's gonna go through here, it's gonna do gas exchange here, and then it's gonna be picked up by the pulmonary veins, which are red, but they are still a vein, they are oxygenated, and it's going back to the left side of your heart pump, okay? Now, this respiratory bronchial is going to come in and it's going to divide up okay and it divides into what we call the alveolar ducts which then separate into the alveolar sacs which separate into individual alveolus so alveolus singular alveoli plural i am not going to ask you to differentiate visually on a slide these things right here okay i need you to know what they are but just remember that this cluster of grapes things is where you have all your alveoli, okay? It's really hard on a slide to see the separations, so just, just know what they are and how they're structured, okay? Now let's look over here at this, okay? Now in APR, they'll label everything for you. Again, I don't really care um, that you can tell me what that is, so I want you to know 
that this is where you have your alveoli. This is all alveoli. All of this is alveoli. And it's simple squamous epithelium. Now here we have a respiratory bronchial. And what you're going to notice is that is not simple squamous epithelium. That is simple cuboidal epithelium. It stains differently. Okay. Um, this is another view of the same basic thing where you can kind of see the structures a little bit better. All right, let's move on to the next. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's actually go back over here to the alveolus right here. Now notice that each one of these balls is going to be wrapped in a capillary bed, but it's also wrapped in elastic connective tissue. Okay, so elastic fibers. So that um, when this when you breathe and these expand, then those elastic fibers will help it recoil back to its normal shape. So you have both capillary and elastic fibers around every single alveolus. All right, next slide. All right, so I really like this picture. So right here is an alveolus, all right? And you can see there's another one there, another one there, another one there. Notice that all of these cells, these are your simple squamous type one cells, okay? Um, you've got little macrophages right here, rolling around, um, looking for things, um, doing their job. Um, here's another one right here, so another white blood cell. The, it used to be said, literally three years ago, we taught that the alveoli were sterile, all right? And if they weren't, you had pneumonia. The alveoli actually, we now know, has its own microbiome of beneficial bacteria. It is very sparse compared to like our gut, but there is a microbiome present inside the lungs, which is really, really interesting, okay? Um, here's a nice view of that simple squamous epithelium from the side. Okay, now we're going to come over here and we're going to look at this picture. What I want you to notice is you've got the simple squamous epithelium here of your red blood cell and you've got the simple squamous epithelium here of your um, 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 alveolus. So super, super thin, very, very thin. This is your respiratory membrane. So here you've got the alveolar epithelium, the capillary epithelium, and then basal lamina, which is like a little glue that kind of sticks them together. Because this is so thin, you can do the gas exchange. Okay? All right, next slide. All right, so we already looked at this a little bit, but let's kind of review it. You've got this lumen, and then right here is the mucosa. And here you will have your PCCE, you will see the cilia, there will also be um, a realer CTP. So a real or connective tissue that's part of that mucosa, okay? So remember, mucosa consists of two things, minimum, epithelium, and um, connective tissue proper. And then sometimes we throw in smooth muscle as well. Now here you can see the submucosa, which is going to, um, in this case, I believe it's mostly in a real or CTP as well. But you've also got embedded mucus glands, okay? And then you see the huge hyaline cartilage, which is the um, tracheal ring in this case, okay? Now this, use your imagination, that is your esophagus. So if you swallow something big, you can actually push into here so that you got a little bit more space for that swallowing. All right, next slide. All right, so now we're gonna look at the trachea bigger, okay? So here, you can see really nicely the PCCE. You see the cilia, all right? Here, I've got goblet cells, okay? Those are gonna be secreting mucus onto the surface, all right? I have, it's really this, a realer CTP is so thin, you can't really see it very well, but that's where it's gonna be. And then I've got my submucosa, and I can see mucus glands, okay? Now, this is at high magnification. We're gonna back it out so that you could see more of it. So here you've got the mucosa, this is the submucosa, and then here you can see the um, hyaline cartilage, okay? 
So you're going to go into APR and you're going to practice that. All right, so here we're looking at a bronchus. And remember that the bronchus and the bronchioles, they're embedded in the lungs. So surrounding it, I'm going to see alveoli, okay? And I'm going to notice that that is all simple squamous epithelium, okay? This is the bronchus. And I know it's a bronchus because I've got fairly large pieces of hyaline cartilage right there, okay? I can see a little bit of smooth muscle in here. I've got my um, 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 lamina propria here, and then I've got my mucosa lining there. This is large, and you, it's so large you can even see the little goblet cells in there, okay? All right, um, let's move on. All right, so we don't have a great um, slide in APR for looking at the serum mucus glands, but so I borrowed this one from online so you can see it a little bit better. So I've got some mucous membrane. This one happens to be simple um, columnar, so it's a little bit deeper down. But here I can see a nice alveolar shaped gland. This is called a sero mucus gland. It secrete, secretes um, a more watery fluid, more watery. All right, then the thicker mucus, and it's full of lysosomes, and um, it's really more for cleaning and pathogen production, whereas the goblet cells that are gonna secrete mucus that goes here is gonna be a little bit thicker, it's more for trapping. All right, next slide. All right, so here we have a large bronchial. Now, you might be able to find remnants of cartilage around some of the larger bronchials. In this case, I actually don't see any. I, I can see the mucosa, I can see smooth muscle here, and then right next to it is really nice because I have a vein which I can see is a collapsed lumen, okay, and I can see the tunica media and then of course the tunica interna, okay. Now I want you to contrast this with smooth, oh excuse me, with an artery, oops, with an artery. So here you can see the ribbon-like shape, no ribbon, no ribbon over here. Okay, and you've got really thick tunica media. So here, thin tunica media and no tunica media on the bronchial rather. You, you do have little remnants of smooth muscle, but you can see it's even less than what you have on a vein. Okay, so it's very minimal. All right, let's move on. All right, so we looked at this a little bit earlier um, in the other slideshow, and we've got, you can see this thing called the alveolar sac, which to me looks like a grape cluster, okay? And then each grape is an alveolus, so alveolus is singular. So we've cut this, and you can see you've got your capillary bed coming in, and it's going to wrap around all of this, okay? And then the, vein, uh, the capillary venous side is going to drain it, and you can see now it's oxygenated going down here. This shows you really nicely how the capillary beds are actually wound around all of the various alveoli. Okay, let's uh, look at the next slide. All right, now this is my favorite slide of all times, okay? Because I've got a beautiful terminal bronchial right here. And then I've got alveoli down here. And remember, I'm not going to ask you to differentiate an alveolar duct from an alveolar sac from an alveolus, okay? Um, on a histology slide. It's just, we don't have time to practice that, okay? But what I'm noticing is right here, I've got my simple squamous epithelium. But look what happens up here. Do you see how that's a darker purple line? That's because that is simple cuboidal epithelium. It's absorbing more stain. So that is your terminal bronchial. All right. Here, no gas exchange because the cuboidal epithelium is too thick. Here, yes, gas exchange because the simple cum simple squamous epithelium is thin enough for gas exchange. All right, next slide. All right, here we're just zooming up. And again, I won't ask you to differentiate between the different um, types. Just be able to say alveoli, okay? But what I want you to notice is the simple squamous epithelium right here, okay? It is really, really super, super thin. All right, this is our last slide, and the reason I am showing you yet another slide of the alveoli is because you can see clearly the simple squamous epithelium there, but here I've got a cell 
That's not flat, not as flat. That is your type two surfactant secreting cell, okay? And then right here, you can see a, an adorable capillary with red blood cells going single file through that capillary, okay? All right, so that is the end of unit eight on the respiratory system. The next unit is number nine, and it is on respiratory physiology.